Well, hey there everyone. How you doing today or this evening, wherever you may be? I'd like to say thanks for joining me here for our little video about how your mind really works and why everything you learned about it was wrong. Well, maybe that's going a little too far. It's not that everything you learned about it was wrong, but I want to show you the model that we've been using to think about the mind and why that doesn't really make sense uh, given the most recent evidence we have about how it probably works, okay? So what was the model that we've been taught so far about how our minds work? Well, we have been using this psychological model from the last century that's based on the work of good old Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, who worked from the idea that we have a conscious mind, you know, our conscious experiences that we're aware of, and an unconscious mind where we have um, repressed memories and instinct and drives and emotions and ideas and fears and all sorts of feelings that we're not conscious that we have. And this also includes um, our bodily processes that keep us going like respiration and uh, digestion, energetic processes that sustain us every second, reproductive processes, a whole realm of experience that is not normally accessible to our conscious mind. And this model pretty much has been something that we've been using for the last hundred years and really without question we see this idea of a conscious mind and then a an unconscious mind, which is thought of as something that's below the conscious mind. And of course, the conscious mind is the one that created this model, so it kind of assigned itself the place of being above the unconscious mind. And more recently, we've had the word come into our, our vocabulary, the subconscious mind, right? which we're all familiar with. Again, the idea being that there's a conscious mind above, a subconscious mind below. And what's ever below the conscious mind um, is more subtle, it's hidden from our direct awareness, and it's almost like this idea that it's somewhere down there, it's almost like a basement, you know, where you put stuff that you don't need anymore and things that you don't wanna see. You know, you can imagine your own basement or friend's basement, you know, the way basements can get. It's a repository for things that you're not actually using, and it's like somewhere way down there, right? Basements are in various conditions, and it's almost seen as a lesser desirable place in some ways than the pristine, kind of cleaned up conscious mind, if you get my drift here. At least that's the way we've been thinking about it. And we call this the iceberg model of consciousness. That's the way it's really referred to. So. The conscious mind part is thought of to be above the surface, above the water. That's the tip of the iceberg, right? And then below that is the unconscious. Um, and in this model, there's an idea of a pre-conscious, which is a state that's just below the surface of awareness. And as we go deeper, we go deeper into the unconscious, even something called the collective unconscious. You know, we're going way down there, way deep into the basement. And in this model that you can see right here, uh, which I just uh, was able to find online, um, we the artist here has even suggested that psychic energy originates in the unconscious, right? Way down there. Somehow there's this maybe a quantum level connection, um, which gives us a kind of a psychic telepathic connection to non-local information. Um, and distant information, things like that, and it originates deep down in the unconscious. Okay, so I'm not suggesting that there isn't something like psychic information or something we think of like that, since you know this is something that I've been involved with researching and teaching for a while. However, what I'm really questioning is whether this iceberg model is really the most accurate way to think about it. Uh, what if that iceberg model is wrong? Is that psychic non-local, distant, quantum information really down there. Because, again, think about it. The conscious mind's created this model and it's kind of assigned itself being kind of the loudmouth that it is. And believe it, believe me, I know about loudmouths because, you know, I like to talk a lot too. But, 
you have to wonder whether the person who's doing the description is putting himself in a particular position to describe the other things in the model. And in this case, it seems like the conscious mind has assigned a, an inferior position to our unconscious mind, right? So what if that's wrong? What if there's nothing down there, right? Nothing down there in the subconscious. What would another way to think about it be? Well, I suggest you take a look at this really interesting, valuable, useful book by this uh, Danish science writer, Tor Noratranders, The User Illusion, Cutting Consciousness Down to Size. Now, in The User Illusion, Noratranders shows us that what we think of as our conscious mind is really just a tiny fraction of our entire awareness. And it's really only about 16 bits a second out of 40 million bits that come into our uh, to our minds. So this has been measured by brain researchers and physiologists, and it's been found that what we consider to be our consciousness is just a mere fraction of the total information that comes into our brains every second. And that is not entirely inconsistent with that iceberg model. You, you might be saying to yourself, well, that kind of sounds about right. You know, we're just getting the tip of the iceberg, but where is the rest of the information? Because what Noratranders is telling us is that if we only see a fraction of 1% of all the information that's coming into our brain every second, who's deciding what we end up seeing? In other words, is consciousness just the leftover information that the rest of our mind decides we need to see for our own survival, benefit, and so forth? And if that's the case, is the conscious mind really conscious at all? And if that's the case, is the so-called unconscious mind really unconscious or isn't it the one that really is where the consciousness is? If you get the meaning here, if you catch the drift, it's the idea if the unconscious mind, so-called unconscious, is smart enough to know what should be shown to our conscious minds, isn't it really the smart one here? And if you begin to look at it this way, you could think of the unconscious as really more a form of parallel consciousness. In other words, it's not that it's unconscious, it's not below the conscious mind, it's just more like a parallel computer process, a parallel consciousness that exists side by side with our conscious mind, passing information in a networked form to our conscious mind, and then deciding what we need to see and what we don't need to see. In other words, it's just another type of consciousness that's operating at a slightly different frequency. The main point being here is that it's not down there. It's not below the conscious mind at all. It's just next to the conscious mind. It's parallel to the conscious mind. So instead of having the traditional model, which says that our conscious mind is above and our subconscious, or if you prefer, unconscious mind is below, we could look at it this way that it's actually a parallel process, like a parallel circuit, and that the unconscious or subconscious aspects of our being are next to our conscious mind, not below it. And if they're really parallel, you could think of them as a type of paraconsciousness, right? So that we have the conscious mind, which you can see in the middle here, as that little blue dot in the middle because we know that our conscious mind is just 16 bits and then there's the 40 million bits a second which are around us that we could call the parallel consciousness or just paraconscious right so keep it simple and it's equal to the conscious mind it's next to the conscious mind it's just not something that we need to see all the time after all you don't need to see everything that's going on around you and hear everything you just need to see what's important what really matters and in this way of looking at it, you could think of it almost like the organs in your body, even though our liver is lower down than our heart when we're standing up, it's closer to the ground. It's not lesser than our heart. It's just in a different position, but it's equally important. You can't survive without a liver any more than you can survive without a heart for more than, you know, a few minutes possibly. The liver itself, for example, does like 700 different functions. It can't even be duplicated by any technology so far as of this, uh, time point where we're talking here. So it's not in the same way that our organs have an equal status. We really can't exist without any of them. Uh, we 
can't exist without any of these aspects of our minds either. And so therefore, they're not lower down, they're not below, there's nothing down there, there's no unconscious down there, there's no subconscious, there's just a parallel consciousness, a power consciousness. It's power conscious, it's not unconscious, right? And so this is the model that you could be using instead of thinking of a, an old basement with cobwebs and things that are down there that you don't need anymore, you know, repressed memories and experiences and so forth, you could think of the mind as a vast parallel computing system like we see in this photograph with our conscious mind being just, if we used this whole room there, our conscious mind might just be like the size of a tennis ball, just getting fed the information that it needs to be fed. And actually the real workers are use all these boxes, all these supercomputers that are doing all the heavy lifting and just at the very tail end of that, just passing over to the tennis ball sized conscious mind, just a little bit of information that it needs to see in order for you to function, and do what you need to do every moment, every second and so forth. So with this model, we're not looking for anything down there, you know, at the quantum level. Now, I'm not suggesting that there aren't quantum processes involved, but again, the quantum processes are not down there either. They're what makes up our entire reality as we know it is made up of quantum processes in our bodies and in all the chemical and physical processes that are happening around us. Even empty space has quantum processes that make reality, our reality, what it is. But they're not down there, they're right here next to us. And in the same way, our unconscious mind is not down there, it's right next to us with all these parallel processing systems that yes, we don't see them, that's the whole beauty of it. You don't need to see it, it works seamlessly and what you're left with every moment is what you need to be paying attention to for the most part. And that's the whole beauty of the system is that it's hidden. Um, and in that case, it isn't lesser, it's just uh, a slightly different aspect of the same system that you don't need to see because it works that well. And that's the whole idea behind it. So anyway, I hope that's been helpful. If you enjoy this sort of thinking, I think you might enjoy our virtual viewing site, virtualviewing.org, where we have practice exercises and ways for you to learn to use more of your own mind and your own parallel consciousness systems. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to talking with you very soon. Okay, take care and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.